My dear brothers, my dear sisters, Allah Azza wa Jal in a beautiful verse in the Quran says, آمَنْ كَانَ مَيْتًا فَأَحْيَيْنَاهُ وَجَعَلْنَا لَهُ نُورًا يَمْشِي بِهِ فِي النَّاسِ كَمَنْ مَثَلُوا فِي الظُّلُمَاتِ لَيْسَ بِخَارِجٍ مِّنْهَا كَذَلِكَ زُيِّنِ لِلْكَافِرِينَ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal states, states beautifully in the Quran is the example of the one who was like the dead and we brought him or her to life is their example like the one who is walking in darkness amongst the people who is walking in darkness amongst the people indeed they're not the same and as such the deeds of the disbelievers have been made pleasant appearing pleasant to them I want to comment or share with you some reflections in this beautiful verse because it contains so much profound meaning for all of us as believers. Within it, we see, brothers and sisters, the beauty of what happens in your and my life when we are touched by Allah Azza wa Jal. We just finished the month of Ramadan. And one of the key questions we have to ask is, what has been the impact on our lives? Within the month of Ramadan, we have tasted transformation in our lives, haven't we? Our lives have been brought to life. We have felt it. We've come closer to the word of Allah. We have come closer to the masjid. Our families might have come closer together. We have come closer to the heavens. And the question is for you and me after the month of Ramadan, what condition do we emerge with? Are we the same people? In this verse, Allah says, is the example of the one who is dead. Means spiritually dead, emotionally dead. They're physically alive, but they're not able to produce. Is the one who has been brought to life, mean he's been touched by the faith, by the word of Allah. Are they the same as the ones walking in darkness amongst the people? I want to ask you today. Are you and I walking in a state of darkness amongst the people? Or are we full of life? And how do we know if something is full of life? You see the trees amongst us. You walk amongst the trees and you see a tree that is blooming with beauty and greenery and fruits and you love to look at it and you love to come to its shade it's full of life and you come across another tree that is barren that is dry that doesn't give you anything you don't like to look at it and you walk by it those are the precise examples of those who have been touched by the word of Allah as compared to those who have not been touched my dear brothers and sisters the fruit of faith the impact of all that worship that we have done in the month of Ramadan is that our hearts come to life and that our limbs start to manifest this life amongst the creation of Allah. How? There's nothing, no better or sweeter fruit that can come out of the believer than his own or her mercy. Showing up on our limbs. Those are the closest of people to Allah. It is Allah who says in the Quran, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Look at the precise description of the Almighty when He says, the servants of the merciful, those have been, who have in, in, you know, earned the title of the servants of the merciful. There is no greater or more honorable title to earn those of, who, have, who have earned the, the closest of, of status, of positions, of places to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah says those are the servants of the merciful. And when they walk on earth, they walk gently. When He described them, He says the first thing you're going to see on these people, when you come across them, is that they walk gently on earth. They're gentle people. They're good people. The fruits of faith come out and shine out of them. I ask you today, are we like those people? Or are we amongst the people that Allah describes are walking in darkness? Those who neglect others, those who disregard others, those who don't connect with the needs of people around them. Are we amongst the first or the second? My dear brothers and sisters, I share this with you because it is the essence of faith. Because there's so many people in our lives that are starving, starving for our encouragement for our healing, for our touch, for our presence in their lives. We're so concerned with our own needs 
that we've neglected to pay attention to the needs of those around us. And yet Allah says, this is where you find faith. And this is where you can gain the greatest of positions and places with Allah Azza wa You wanna come closer to Allah? You wanna change your life? Here is change. It lies within the gesture and the act of compassion that you and I can give to those around us. Who amongst us would have thought that faith will be found there? When you feel broken, brothers and sisters, when you feel lazy, when you feel that void in your heart, and many of us are, are, are thirsty for, for, for freshening up our lives. Many of us might be feeling bitter. Many of us might be feeling broken. Many of us might be feeling frustrated. How do you change your life instantly? Allah says, show me the best of what you can produce. Show me your compassion, show me your heart. Is that difficult? It isn't difficult. But many of us are unaware and we walk within that darkness. I share with you a story, brothers and sisters, of a great man that many of us might have thought of or affiliated or association with the notions of, 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 of strength and, and harshness almost. This is the figure of Umar ibn al-Khattab, a towering figure that even used to intimidate people. What most of us as Muslims do not understand is that this man carried an incredibly gentle and compassionate heart. More than you can imagine. I share with you a story that illustrates to you how far he was willing to go. How far he was willing to go. To inconvenience himself for the sake of healing people who need help. For the sake of fulfilling the needs of those who are broken. Because within it lies faith. You see, the test of it all is how far will you go to help those who need help, to be kind who need, to those who need kindness. How far will you go, brothers and sisters? It is reported that Umar ibn al-Khattab, once upon a time, was walking with his servant, Aslam, who was a freed slave, walking in the corners of Medina to check on the conditions of people, to look out for those who might need help, to look out for those who might need help. How many of us are willing to skip a meal, to look for someone who needs help? Looking at it as an opportunity from Allah Azza wa And many of us are running away from it. He's walking in the corners of the Medina, on the outskirts of Medina, up to three miles out of the Medina, out of Medina, looking. And within the middle of the night, within the midst of the night, he and his servant see a fire at a distance. And he says to his servant, let's go check it out and see who's there. Maybe it is somebody who's in the desert that they, they, they need help. And they, indeed, as they come closer, they see this campfire. They see a campfire. And Omar looks and he sees a woman. But he's a man of etiquettes and, and, and mannerisms. He looks at her and he greets her by saying, Salamu alaykum, people of the light. Salamu alaykum, people of the light, referring to the fire. She looks back and greets him, wa alaykum as salam. He says, can I come closer? She looks at him, she doesn't know him. She says, if you carry good intentions, come closer or else stay away. He comes closer and he sees that she was surrounded by children and there was a pot, there was a pot on top of some burning fire on top of some burning fire that she's lit up. And he saw the kids crying. He looks at the woman and he says, what is wrong? What's the matter? What's happened? She says, we have experienced the bitterness of the cold of the night. And my kids are hungry. My kids are hungry. And he's, he asks her, why, is that why they're crying? She says, yes, they are crying. Then, he tells, then she tells him something amazing and profound. She says, we're broken, we're hungry, we have nothing to eat, nothing to satiate us. And one day Allah will stand between us and Umar ibn al-Khattab. One day Allah will stand between us and Umar ibn al-Khattab. He was so alarmed. He was terrified. He says, oh woman, because she had no idea it was Umar. And he didn't identify himself, nor was he interested in making himself known. She says, oh woman, Stop it there. Why, why are you saying this about Omar? How would he know about, his con about your condition and your children? She says, didn't Allah give him authority over us? And if he has accepted that authority over us, how would he not care for our condition and seek us out? Omar was terrified, brothers and sisters. 
Omar was terrified from that statement. He looks at his servant, he says, let's run. And they start to run, both of them, in the middle of the desert, going to the warehouse. And they get to the warehouse in Medina, several miles from the location of the campsite. Here he is, the leader of the righteous, the leader of the believers, running in the middle of the night, in the middle of a desert, to get to a, to get to a warehouse and grab some food. He gets there, he goes into the warehouse, it is reported that he grabbed a sack of flour and some meat shortening and meat fat. He puts it into a sack and then he looks at Aslam and he says, Aslam, take this sack and put it on my back. Aslam says, oh, leader of the righteous, it is unbecoming of me to put it on your back. There's no way, I'll carry the sack. Omar looks back at Aslam and Aslam reports this. He says, he looked back at me with anger and he said, put it on my back now. Are you going to carry my burden on the day of judgment? Are you going to carry my burden on the day of judgment? Put it on my back. And Aslam said, I had no choice but to put the sack on his back. And it was a heavy, heavy sack of food. He put it on his back and he started to walk. And I was walking by him all the way back to the campsite. And it was such a long distance that he had to actually put the sack down to rest multiple times. And each time I would ask him, can I put it on my back? And he'd say, no way. Put it on my back and don't ask. And he put it on his back and walked for miles. Walked for miles until he reached the campsite. And he put the sack down. Put the food, put the food into the pot and Aslam is reporting this. He says, stay aside. Don't touch anything. I'm going to take care of it all. Aslam was watching his master. And he said he put the food into the pot and the woman was watching with her children. The woman was watching with her children. He said he put the food into the pot and started to cook. And he said, I saw him reaching underneath the fire. He said, I saw him reaching underneath the fire, blowing on the fire, blowing onto the fire seeking to ignite it more. And the smoke of the fire was going through his beard. And he kept blowing and blowing, and indeed cooked the food and finished, while the woman was watching. He finished, brothers and sisters, and he put the food in some plates and served the children. While the woman was watching, and she started to have tears of joy, as she was overtaken by this extraordinary scene of this strange man she didn't know who was there for her and her children to, to fulfill their needs. He cooked and finished the food and they started to eat. And then he went back to the woman after they were done and he said, is there anything that I can do for you? She started to make dua for him and Aslam said, I heard her making dua for Omar. She didn't know who, who it was, but she was making dua. She says, may Allah bless you. May Allah reward you. May Allah bless you. May Allah reward you. You're such a good man. And you are better than Umar ibn al-Khattab. You're better than Umar ibn al-Khattab. He looks back at her, he says, Oh woman, just don't say anything bad. Say good, say good. She says, But Allah, you're better than Umar ibn al-Khattab. Then he retreats back, and his servant looks at him, he says, Oh Umar, are we done? Can we go now? He says, No. And he stands there without saying a word. He goes back a distance and he starts to look at the children. And his servant is just looking at him, not understanding why Omar is standing there. And he says, no words. He just stood there. Stood there until the kids finished eating. And then they start to play and horse around. And they got tired and they slept. Omar looks back at his servant and he says, you see, I could not leave this site until I made sure that they were happy. And until I made sure that they slept. Because moments ago, brothers and sisters, when he asked the woman, why are you, what are you doing with that pot? She told him that we were, I was putting this pot, I put this pot and I burned the fire underneath it to make it look like there was food coming for the children to quiet down and go to sleep. That moment shook Omar, brothers and sisters, shook him. And he stayed there until they were done and they went to sleep. But this time went to sleep because they were full. 
Not because they were, they were thinking there was food coming and there was no food coming. He goes back to the woman asking again, is there anything else I can do? And she says, no, may Allah bless you. He says to her, tomorrow, you go to the office of the leader of the believers, Amir al-Mu'mineen. You go and ask him for everything that you need. And when you go there, you will find me there. And he departs. He departs. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask you today. We're not talking about distant stories from the past as a, as a matter of entertainment. These are stories for you and me to reflect on how our lives are like. When we wake up in the morning, how many of us are concerned for anyone in our lives? And how many of us are just merely thinking of our own dreams and our own needs? When we're sad, we want someone to put a smile on our faces. Isn't it true? When we're in traffic, we want somebody to give us room to go in. When we need help or we need a ride, we're looking for somebody to give us a ride. When we are discouraged, we were looking for somebody to give us a hug and encourage us. We know what it feels when someone is compassionate with us. We seek it out. What is life if, so, if people are not good with us? But the question is to you and me today is, are we serving as tools of healing for those around us? Meaning, those people in your life right now, and they're no accident. Allah put each individual in your life for a reason. And there are no accidents, beginning with your own family, your, your parents, your spouses, your children. Those are people that Allah brought into your life. And they have profound emotional and spiritual needs. And Allah puts you into their lives to help fulfill those needs. I ask you today when you see tears on your children's faces, or on your spouse's face, or on a stranger's face, whose path intersects with your path, are you bothered by this? Do you go out of your way to go wipe the tears on their faces? How many of us brothers and sisters are occupied every single day when we wake up in the morning thinking to themselves, how many souls am I gonna heal today? How many smiles am I gonna produce? How many tears am I going to wipe? How many fallen people am I gonna lift? How many broken hearts am I gonna put together? That's where faith is, that's what pleases Allah. It is reported that Malik ibn Dinar, a beautiful figure, amongst the righteous, amongst the best of the scholars, was walking on the street after Salah. Here's where faith shows up. He sees a drunken man, a man who's intoxicated, brothers and sisters, laying on the side of the street, almost unconscious with froth and foam coming out of his mouth. And in the midst of that condition, he's saying, Allah, Allah, but froth is coming out, he's intoxicated. I want to ask you today, if you walk by a drunkard, what will you say? How many of us will say, may Allah curse them, look at them, and pity them, and feel good about ourselves? You know, we just love to judge people. We love to be harsh with people. We love to feel good about ourselves by declaring our others unworthy of the mercy of Allah. Malik ibn Dinar, the great righteous man, stopped immediately. And he looked at that man and his heart was broken. And he says that I looked at him and I saw the word of Allah coming out of his mouth. And with, with, with liquor and alcohol coming out of his mouth as well. Intoxicated, I couldn't leave. He said I lifted him up and I cleaned his mouth. Cleaned his mouth, brothers and sisters, completely. Took him to his home, washed him up, fed him. And the man was just beginning to regain consciousness. Took care of him completely and then took him back home. Weeks later, brothers and sisters, weeks later, Malik ibn Dinar comes back into the masjid. After Salat al-Fajr, he's scanning the masjid to look for people. Who's new? Who's a stranger? Who needs anything? And he sees this strange man, but he didn't recognize him. And he was praying there. He goes and introduces himself saying, Ana Malik, you know, who are you? I've never seen you in this masjid before. This man knew, knew instantly who Malik was because Malik was the one who helped him out. He was the man who was drunk. And Malik, the man that, subhanAllah, Malik of Dinar reached down to help. And he looked at Malik and he says, I am the man that Allah has sent to bring back to life. I'm the man that Allah has sent you to bring me back to life. Brothers and sisters, how many people have we brought back to life? Are we becoming like miracles for others? 
Are we a source of healing? Or are we just busy judging those around us? Are we busy just deciding who is in and who's out, who's worthy of the mercy of Allah and who's not, instead of being busy with the work that Allah wants us to busy with? Healing those who are broken, wiping the tears and producing smiles. By Allah, brothers and sisters, if you find yourself doing these things, glad tidings to you. You're going to find the mercy of Allah showing up in your life. The greatest way to get the mercy and the blessings of Allah is to show mercy and compassion to those around us. And I'm going to tell you today, brothers and sisters, they're in desperate need of it. You'll be amazed how many people in your life are desperate for that word of encouragement from you, for just a smile from your face, from a, from a, for an assurance, for them to be lifted by you. But yet, most of us are just neglecting those opportunities. We ask Allah Azza wa to bless us and to bless our hearts and make us among the compassionate who walk with that light of Allah on this earth. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم فاستغفروا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق وسيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear brothers and sisters, what I spoke about today is a gift from Allah. The unfortunate thing, the sad reality is that most of us are unaware. Unaware that this is the ultimate gift for your heart and my heart to be gentle and kind. To look out for the needs of others before our own needs. Before our own needs, instead of asking, who's there to put a smile on my face? Allah is saying, how many smiles are you producing? And how many hearts are you breaking? There's nothing that will bring you closer to Allah than healing a broken heart. Than wiping a tear of a, of, of a person in your life. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter. Allah says in the Quran, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ He tells the Prophet wasallam the following. He says, it is out of the mercy of Allah that He has made you gentle. The gentleness and the compassion of the Prophet wasallam was a gift from Allah. He made his heart like this. What kind of hearts do you and I have? Today, the amazing thing is that you and I right now have infinite capacity for goodness. You and I have a choice right now to smile, isn't it true? When you go and have a conversation with your spouse tonight, and she or he says something that upsets you, you have a capacity to either forgive and smile or to shout. It's within us. We have the capacity to produce something good or to produce something bad. We have the choice. Isn't it amazing that we're constantly choosing to do something that is mean to people, that is harsh, that puts them down? Allah is demanding of us a choice here, a choice for something more beautiful. The month of Ramadan, brothers and sisters, was all about bringing out the best out of us. It's within us. Right now, within your own hands, there is healing. Within your own face, within your own smile, within even your voice. It is very easy to give a good word that encourages someone but yet we withdraw it. It is very easy to hug someone that needs a hug, but yet we withdraw it. It is very easy to advise someone and, and, and help them out in this life, but yet we say, what about me? And Allah is demanding, what are you doing right now? Wallahi, brothers and sisters, there is no greater treasure. There is no greater treasure than for people to stop making dua for you that, because you've helped them out. And if you want blessings for your children and your family, be on the lookout for people who need help in your life. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, if you find your heart inclining towards that, say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allah has softened my heart. Allah has softened my heart. And there's nothing we desperately need more at this moment, in this short life, than for Allah to soften our hearts. And then not to be stuck, stuck on ourselves, stuck on the mistakes of others. Life is too short, brothers and sisters. Those around us, that we're judging, that we're reminding of their mistakes. It's a matter of time before they leave or you leave. Are they gonna be making good gods for us? Or will they be happy when we leave? Because we might have been too harsh with them. Time is tight. Your children needs, need you. Your spouses need you, brothers and sisters. It is not hard to brighten their days and put a smile on their face. Do it for the sake of Allah. And see what Allah will do with your lives. By Allah, you will be known in the heavens. By Allah, you'll be among the most beloved to Allah. For the Prophet ﷺ said in a beautiful hadith, he was asked, who are the most beloved people to Allah? And who are the best people to Allah? He said, the most beloved people to Allah are those who help those in need. And the, one, and the action that is most beloved to Allah is to put a smile on someone's face 
or to relieve them in their time of need. There's nothing greater. Let us reach out to Allah right now because life is short, brothers and sisters. Right now we have an opportunity when we get out of this masjid today to put a smile on the family, our family's faces, on the faces of people around us. This is your chance. This is your, your, your opportunity to show your face. Show it to Allah. Show your faith, excuse me. And to really walk with that gentleness that Allah Azza wa has talked about, it is our choice, brothers and sisters. May Allah Azza wa soften our hearts. May Allah fill our hearts with compassion. May Allah make us conscious of ourselves and conscious of the needs of others. May Allah make us empathetic. May Allah make us walk with that light that brings people from death to life. May Allah Azza wa protect us from that darkness that can envelop people in their lives, prevent, preventing them from all the good that can elevate them to Allah. May Allah join us with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah make us a source of compassion, inspiration, healing and upliftment for our children, our spouses, our parents, our neighbors, our friends and our communities. May Allah make us among the righteous. Allah maghfir lana wa rahamna wa afu anna wa tawalla amrana wa ahsan khalasana wa akhtim bil baqiyati salihati a'malana. Allahumma jalna min al-ruhama. Allahumma ارزقنا يا رب العالمين الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى واجمعنا برسولنا الحبيب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم في جنات الفردوس مع النبيين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا وصل لهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأخم الصلاة